I'm gonna make something today that sounds pretty complicated, and I bet you it is. But I think I got this. With Julia's help, of course. Of course. Oh! <laughs> bon appetit. Welcome to my home. We're gonna arm ourselves with Julia Child's Mastering the Art of French Cooking. This is the second one today. That's where we're gonna find this very interesting recipe. It's a half boned and stuffed chicken in a pastry crust. Have you ever seen such a thing? I have not, never. I know this is gonna be one of those recipes of hers that just, you know, we're gonna take the scenic route to get to the finish line, I'm sure. So I just kinda of have to break this all down into sections, into chapters. That's how I usually excel at these recipes. Excel is a very strong word. First up, we have a half-boned chicken. Now I've deboned a turkey and a duck entirely. So we're just doing half the job of that and it's with a chicken. So I think we're good there. Then we gotta make a stuffing, stuff the chicken. <laughs> Wrap the chicken back up into its shape. And then I gotta make a pastry wrap that around the chicken and it has to resemble the shape of a chicken still. You see, the thing is, it kind of just sounds a bit like a chicken version of a beef wellington in a way. And I've made that, so I got that going for me. That's what we got to do. I'm ready. We're going to bring over our little whiz kid. It's Steve. We're going to make a pastry dough. This is called pat a crustade. It's a dough I've never made before. It translates to crisp dough. And she says it's perfect for meat pies or half boned and stuffed chickens, I guess. This dough is also good to eat. That's what she says here, <laughs> that's good. One pound, three and a half cups of all purpose flour with two teaspoons of salt. Locked, loaded, and pulse. Cool. Five and a half ounces, 11 tablespoons worth, chilled cubed butter. And then this is interesting. This is three ounces, six tablespoons of lard. So uh, I'm opting for uh, pork lard because that's what I got on hand. And I'm like, well, I've never had that in a dough before. So today's a new day. <laughs> Quiet, please. Let's give that a few pulses. Whoa. It's not really coming together the way it usually does, but uh, maybe I got to do something else. Four egg yolks. One cup of chilled water. And I'm not gonna use all of it, probably just use like a quarter of it or whatever, however much I need. Something's not working yet. That's perfect. Now once it starts and I mean just starts to form a mass on top of the blade in here, uh, we're good. This is the final blending of the flour and the fats. Just, you know, smear it with the palm of my hand. Just a few times, we're good. Okay, I didn't want to overmix it. That feels right to me. I form it into a cushion shape. I'm gonna wrap this up and chill it for two hours. And I'm gonna thank the sponsor of today's episode, Maiden. Maiden designs professional quality products for the home cook, and their kitchenware is used in multiple three Michelin star restaurants. And in this zero star apartment kitchen. I have always wanted stainless steel cookware, but with all the moving around I've done throughout the years, it's just the one thing I didn't have in this kitchen. And now that I do, I'm using them all the time. Whether you're whipping up bolognese sauce or a half bone stuffed chicken in a pastry crust, that is a shout out. But in this three quart saucier, 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 whatever you call it, this pan is a revelation. Think a Dutch oven meets a saucepan, meets a skillet, meets a, well speaking of skillets, check out this money shot. So there's something very comfortable about this handle. It's designed to stay cool on the stovetop and it's ergonomic to help balance the pan and can go from the stovetop to the oven with ease up to 800 degrees Fahrenheit. So check out Maiden's stainless steel collection as well as their other cookware and use the link in my description to save on your order. Thank you Maiden and back to work. Our chicken. This is a four and a half pounder. Paper towel here, just give it a quick little dry. Yep, and just kind of Toss that behind you, and then unrelated to the other paper towel, I have a damp paper towel in my hand that I am going to use. There we go. So there's not a whole lot of guesswork that is required with this deboning, because she kind of lays it all out with these fantastic illustrations. Plus I deboned a turkey too. So how do you separate this one last bit? Oh. 
the carcass. Set the chicken breast up and with a sharp knife, slit the skin from the neck to the tail. Remove the goodie bag. Just the skin, not the meat, Jamie. Follow the ridge of the breastbone. Peel the skin back using my fingers. Go down to the shoulders and to the second joints to expose the whole expanse of the breasts. Lovely. Check out them breasts. Well, it's not lovely, but it's, it's something. Turn the chicken over and slit the skin from neck to tail. All right, so I gotta cut off the wings at the elbow. And that's the elbow. All right. Off go the wings. Peel the rest of the skin off the chicken. Careful not to detach any actual parts of this, this bird. So there's like this book, you have to go back and forth with the pages to see where you're at. And every time I have to do that, I gotta go wash my hands. It's a whole thing. Honestly, I got a bit confused with some of the directions there. So I think I'm supposed to leave a quarter inch from the edge of the backbone on each side, which I didn't do. So I'll just leave this strip right there. That's the best I can offer right now. Cut through the ball joint that connects the wing to the shoulder. Same with this side. And cut through the ball joint with the hip to the drumstick. This will prevent the appendages from kicking through the pastry while cooking. Yeah, there you go. Starting on one side of ridge of breastbone, cut through flesh to bone, all along its length from neck end to tail. Cutting out the breast meat, that's what we're doing. I don't wanna waste any meat, so just keep the knife along the bone there. And then let's cut through the center there too. With heavy shears and starting at the tail end, cut through the upper half of the breastbone rib structure midway on each side. It's freed. The chicken has been half deboned, officially. We can uh, just put that off to the side. So I gotta cut the breast meat into strips. That's what Julia says. I don't know how thin, just going with that. I'm just gonna need any old dish for a marinade. A tablespoon of minced shallot. Minced shallot. Port wine. I need about a tablespoon and a half. Ground white pepper, doesn't say how much, so I'll just use my, uh, my brain. Pinch of dried thyme. This next ingredient is completely out of left field. Um, is it though? Maybe not. Uh, it says I need a one ounce can of truffles. Well, I got a one ounce jar of truffles. I bought this jar for the fish canals and I just kept it in the freezer. And then whenever I want truffles, I just thaw it out. But she's telling me to use the whole can of this stuff. And I'm like, well, I don't want to. Do I have to? I mean, it's pretty potent stuff. Why don't I just use one truffle? An uncut truffle, just throw it in there. And then the juices of the jar. So I'll just use a bunch of these juices. Let's just move it all about in the marinade. Of course, pay attention to the whole truffle because it's in there. Don't forget it. Cover it up. Keep this in the fridge until it's needed. We're gonna move on to our stuffing, which is a rice, mushroom, and chicken liver stuffing with a puree of garlic. So first up, I need separate each clove. Boiling water, one minute. Drain, and I should be able to just slip the peel right off. Peel isn't easily coming off them, so it would have been easier if I just hadn't done that. But Julia's the boss, and I listen, so. She had her reasons, I'm sure. Small saucepan. Add in the garlic cloves. One cup of chicken stock. Quarter cup of uh, dry white wine. This is a Sauvignon Blanc. A slow simmer for 30 minutes. I got a handful of mushrooms here that I uh, may or may not have washed, but uh, they need drying, so uh, there's a hint. Quarter them. All right, that's gonna equal around a cup worth, give or take, definitely give. Mince up a shallot. Okay, so I'm gonna bring over my tub of chicken liver. <laughs> I only need three of them. Three. First, I'm gonna remove any of the funky bits. Yeah, no thank you. So into three eighth inch pieces. In my very cool pan here, a saucier. Moderately high heat. A tablespoon of butter. A tablespoon of oil. A cup of mushrooms that have been quartered. Two tablespoons of minced shallot. Plus a little for good luck. Toss it around in the butter and the oil until a fat reappears on the surface of the mushrooms. I think we're there. Three diced chicken liver, in you go. I saute these up for a minute. Get off. 
pour in a quarter cup of port wine, reduce that down, boiling rapidly until the wine has entirely evaporated. Take it off the heat. Bowl me. Thank you. All that good stuff in there, scrape up as much as you can. So unbeknownst to you, I have some rice in a saucepan here. I need, what, two and a half cups worth of this plain rice. Okay, I gotta add an egg in here, but I'm gonna wait till everything cools down because I know I'm just gonna cook that. So let's add other things. Lots of other things can happen here. Around a quarter teaspoon of thyme. I'm gonna need another bowl. Thank you. Bit big, but it will work, and the sieve. Thank you. The drain cooked garlic here. I didn't need such a big bowl, but okay. I'm gonna drain the garlic and <laughs> cooking liquids can just go off to the side. Honestly, there's just a bit of a bowl mayhem over here. We'll figure it out. Mash this garlic through a sieve into the mixing bowl. It's going through, right? Oh, hell yeah, it is. Honestly, quite a bit of work for some mashed up garlic, but it, it works. Two tablespoons of this garlic cooking liquid. Let's get that egg in there. Blend that in with everything else. But act fast so you don't cook it. Crack in some pepper and salt. Here is our rice, mushroom, and chicken liver stuffing with puree of garlic. Mmm! Let's go get our chicken. Breast meat and the rest of it. And yeah, so uh, yeah, this is great. Stuff the chicken. So I gotta raise the legs upright. Then I flex them, pushing knees against the armpits. Then I'm gonna run the skewer through the knees. Okay, I gotcha, I gotcha. That will hold the legs in place for the rest of the operation. It does feel like a bit of an operating table here, doesn't it? Mound whatever stuffing you have chosen in the cavity, building this into a dome at the front to simulate the breasts. She has asked for three and a half cups of stuffing for a four and a half pound bird, and that's what we're doing here, but I mean, this seems like it's... It seems like a lot. Dial it back a bit. I feel like that's just a bit too much. Kind of spilling all over the place. Okay. Take the strips of breast meat and lay it over the stuffing. <laughs> okay. Julia. And there you have it. This, there's our stuffed chicken. And there. Oven's set to 400 degrees F, and I totally forgot about the truffle. If these chicken breasts do not taste like truffle, that is not money well spent. Put this aside, whatever that is, and okay. It is time to work with the pastry. I only need two thirds of it right now. So I gotta roll this so that it's large enough to cover the tops and the sides of this bird. This dough had a total of three hours in the fridge and honestly, it's the best thing that could ever happen to it. Paint the chicken with white wine or stock or the garlic cooking liquid. I got plenty of that. Let's just put a pin in this for a second. Uh, uh -oh. All right, so this is what we gotta do. We're painting the chicken with the garlic cooking liquid. Okay, the stuffing needs to stay in the freaking carcass. I've tried using my skewer to really keep the shape of this thing, but it's really just kind of doing whatever it wants. Like the breast will not stay in place. The stuffing just keeps shifting and the tectonic plates of this bird are just all out of whack right now. I am going to proceed though. Butter up this roasting pan. It's fantastic. Get this freaking Frankenstein chicken in here. Pastry goes on over the chicken. Trim off any extra pastry, leaving only enough to cover the sides of the chicken completely. Bare bottom of the chicken rests on the baking surface. Okay. That might work better. Okay, we're gonna, we're gonna do a bit of a Mission Impossible right now. Butter up my pizza pan because my concern is how the hell do I get it out of the baking dish, you know what I mean, once it's baked. Mission impossible! Whew. This thing is quickly turning into a bit of a dumpster fire. It would be best to get this into the fridge while I figure out my next move. So with the pastry scraps, which is quite a bit, pastry dough is not gonna go to waste because we're gonna be able to patch up any of the issues with the bird. 
but also make some cool patterns. It's gonna be a great time. So just cut out any old patterns you wish. So she's got like, what looks like wishbone things going on here. Or maybe, I don't know what they are, but I'm gonna do them. This is what she's done. So kind of, she's done like three of these. Where did she come up with designs? Whatever designs you wish, she said. Well, I'm gonna take some like uh, pastry cutters here and get creative with the rest of it. I mean, we are looking at something that needs some serious attention. I have to move incredibly fast right now. So uh, I got an egg glaze, which is a whole egg mixed with a tablespoon of water. Paint the pastry dough with it. Take the egg glaze, paint underneath your pieces and then kind of glue them on top. just have to do an emergency patchwork around this thing because it's just kind of a rescue op because the pastry has gotten a bit soft. I mean, mega soft. You know, I'd love to show you what the hell I'm doing right now, but I have the whole thing in the freezer just to chill off for a second. Uh, and I'm just doing cross hatchings in here to try to blend the whole thing together. But uh, things are looking pretty bleak. Anyway, this is a complete Hail Mary, but I'm gonna go middle rack, 400 degrees oven, 25 minutes to start. <sighs> Close your eyes. Just hold on tight. That's all we can do. After around five minutes, I decided to just yank this thing out of the oven because it just looks ridiculous. <laughs> it looks really stupid. And I'm like, you know what? I can do better. And the problem isn't what's underneath, it's the pastry dough. Why don't I just take this thing off? You know, put the chicken in the fridge, try again. That's what I'm thinking. Take a breath, redo the pastry dough, have a great time. That's, get that tattooed. Several hours later. Firstly, I'm sticking to my convictions. I'm using this roasting pan. The big lesson learned here from my previous disaster is that everything needs to be very chilled. The chicken, so it's not flopping around and I can keep those legs in place with the skewer. When the stuffing is cold, it's firmer and it's moldable, so it's gonna not spill out of the bird. In between each step, everything stays in the fridge. The dough, which yes, needs to be very chilled. Quick, quick like a bunny, I'm gonna cover the chicken with the dough. Be hasty with my time, keep it cold. I cut out some of these shapes matching to Julia's design designs, sort of. Like it's like a, just a straight kind of rectangle here. I'll do two of those. Okay, bring this honker over here. So with an egg wash, I'm gonna paint the underside of each one of these patterns and I'm gonna glue them on top of this thing. Stick these on the side, I guess. I don't know. And then what else do we got here? Some of these. I mean, that's as far as you wanna push that, right? The rest would be overkill, so I think I'm just gonna leave it like that. And now we cover everything with the egg glaze. Draw the point of a knife over the glaze into the pastry to make decorative cross hatch marks. The, yeah. So I'm gonna get this into the 400 degree oven middle wrap for 20 to 25 minutes just to start. And then we will go from there. After 25 minutes, she claims that this thing is supposed to start browning nicely. It really hasn't started browning all that much, but it will, I know it. Turn the oven temperature down to 350, and then I'm gonna check it again in another 30 minutes. That looks great, I think. It's quite the redemption arc that we have going on right now. I need to get this out of this pan. So, uh, it's like, worry about it later, and then now it's later. Here we go. Wow. Now with this roasting pan, I'm gonna get the burners on. Minced shallots, two tablespoons worth. And around a quarter cup of port wine. Scrape up all the chicken stuff stuck to the pan. Concentrate the flavor, so boil it down rapidly. And we get that into a skillet. I'm gonna add a cup of chicken stock, 
Concentrate that flavor, boil it rapidly. Add in half a cup of cream. Boil a few minutes to thicken lightly. Salt, little Pepsi, remove from the heat. Just before serving, I'm gonna add in a couple tablespoons of butter. And she says I'll only have a cup worth of sauce. Coats the back of the spoon, no problem. And it's delicious. Sudden turn of events here, I have decided and I'm gonna put this thing on the cutting board because I think it's gonna look nicer than whatever I got going on right now. That's it, we did it, order up! So this is how we serve. From neck to tail, I gotta cut through the crust. Thread the crust to the sides of the chicken. Ooh. <laughs> Okay, remove the legs and the wings, cut everything into serving pieces. A little bit of everything on the plate, white meat, dark meat, stuffing, and pastry. To cap it all off, I gotta spoon some of the sauce on top and around everything. You start asking yourself, what was it all for? I know it was for the presentation. It's to show it off at the dinner table. Look what I made. But when you just cut it open and you serve it, it just ends up being a big pile on the plate, so. If I didn't redo that pastry, this thing would have been a dumpster fire. It's kind of got vibes of chicken pot pie going on with the pastry and the chicken. You know, it's nice. Chicken was really tasty. I wasn't picking up on the truffle. You know, no truffle in there, I don't think. But, uh, you know, stuffing, you know, you can pick up in the liver in there. You know, I've never had pot pie with liver in there, so it kind of separates itself from that. And, well, the pastry was like tender, crisp, flaky. What else you need? You know, sauce is nice too. One of the classic Julia sauces over here. Not many things I can say against this dish besides the fact that, you know, you serve it to your guests, right? At the dinner table, you cut it open, then what? Is it worth all the hassle to do all that? <laughs> Just for some ch <laughs> No, it's not. This was Jamie and Julia. Bon appétit. Au revoir. <laughs>